garden. Welcome to another year and another week in our garden. Now I hope you've all had a good rest over Christmas and New Year and I think you'll all be rearing to get in your garden. Today is one of the nicest days we've had on this garden but this morning it was absolutely white over with frost so but we'll walk down the garden we'll show you what we've been up to in a short while we're going to start in the shed and I'm just going to show you the few seeds I've got that I will be putting in over the next week or so this month I'm going to put them in the propagators with a little tiny bit of bottom meat and I shall rig up the light over the top once they start germinating to bring them on. Now we subscribe to the Kitchen Garden magazine when Mike Erdis was going to be in to make sure we could see him in his fame and glory and we did a full subscription for the year so we could see some of the other YouTubers as well that have been in the magazine. We're proud of you all for getting in. Now because we subscribed we got loads and loads of packets of seed now these are the tomatoes that the centers so I've never actually had so many tomatoes to set as what we've got this year but I will set some of all of them so we can have lots of different varieties also I'm going to be popping the pepper seed in later in the month as well these are some that we had last year we had that many I held them but I have stored them properly so they should be all right right over Christmas I was given a couple of packets of sweet pea seed so I'll put those in as well they're not nothing special but they're the ones we want they're normally the ones that do the best now potato wise I've got four bought four lots in ready what I should do, I should put them in the egg boxes like they all do to, to chip them. Now the earlies, this is Maris Piper. What we should do is, you all know by now, which is the rose end. Now the rose end of the potato is the end where all the eyes are, where most of the eyes are, shall we say. You might get an odd one at the bottom, but there's usually more than one at the rose end. But what we do is pop them in, with the rose end upwards and then just give them see that's got loads of eyes on that one just give them some light and some warmth don't let the frost get to them and then they'll start sprutting away merrily now if it if you have set your potatoes out ready and it looks like it's getting a bit cold or frosty i've moved them to somewhere frost free or put several layers of fleece over them, that should protect them. Luckily, the shed we've got is fully insulated and it's, I think it's only been down to two, two degrees Celsius in the shed all winter, so it's a very good shed. It holds its heat very well. The other varieties we bought was a few King Edwards. They are, look like Desiree. Yes, they're Desiree. And then I'm going to try the old international kidney again I haven't tried that for a few years now we'll have a go on that it's a second early but we can run into a main crop if you wish the international kidney now I haven't got a lot of potatoes there I've got a few here that are unnamed that we bought in unnamed bags so we might put those in as well the one thing I am going to do this year is I am definitely going to use nematodes. I put some on last year and I think I went a bit too early but this year and I got full of slugs so this year I'm going to do two doses of the nematodes to keep the slugs off the potatoes. It's a shame to take them all the way through from digging the land to harvest them only to find that you've got slugs in them when the nematodes will go down there and do the job for you. Okay, so we'll have nematodes this year. Another job we'll do next week is we'll collect the samples up from the four plots. 
put the samples of the soil in these bottles then we'll top them up with deionized water give them a good shape and let them stand so they settle and then we'll be able to do the soil tests off that we'll also do the electronic soil test as well it's sort of efficient but this this way is a lot better so we'll probably do the both and compare the two uh, what they like but that's another job to do next week we'll also spray the fruit trees for the winter wash i've been holding it as long as i can but they're totally dormant now and so we want to get that job out of the way and recheck those grease bands make sure they're all nice and tacky and sticky but that's a job to do next week so we have more where it begins now okay so let's have a walk down the garden oh as we walk down the garden i just want to prune a little bit of the blueberry just to get some old stalks out i'll show you how we do that now i'm out in the sunshine now it's doing this cold the world of good now these are the blueberries now we had quite a bit of mint stuff if you like christmas tree to put on but I had it out there but the chickens wouldn't leave it alone so I've had to drop it on temporary and then I remove these wooden squares that are round the blueberries and I'm going to put a big big one now they're getting quite big we'll give them more root room in the meantime we need to cut some of this old wood out now what, what I do with my blueberries I only take out the old wood so if we look at this this is very old here this one and that one so all we're going to do is just remove those two this year and obviously any broken branches from the winter you must snip those back but you can see it's beginning to bud now so we need to get these branches cut off it just keeps the newer growth coming through we go as low as we can and we just take it off okay quite hard wood this and it's off it looks a big branch but it's well worth it for the bush there you are look all that's coming off so take that out and the only other one i'm going to take is that one there and that's this little bush finish then if i go around here look and oh it's tough that's it I have to take that tie off. Two ties. You can see this very old wood look. It's beginning to split. And this will actually encourage new growth to come up from the bottom. And it's that new growth that will next year, not this year, but next year give you lots of blueberries. On this bush. I'm just going to take out this one here which is a very very old branch so it's peeling back and it's ready for coming out so same again if we can get to it yes and chop it there you are it's a bit tied in now that's all I'm going to do pruning wise to the blueberries this year I am going to change <coughs> oh dear excuse me I am going to change the box that they're in if you like and make a nice raised bed so I can just add the ericaceous to it and hopefully the chickens won't be able to get in and mess them all up okay now I'll leave these on top of the compost bin to dry and then I'll take them down to the incinerator these are what's left of the Brussels stalks that will never go into the compost each now so again I'll just let them dry out a bit and then put them on the incinerator they will burn that's the what's left of the stalks of the Brussels the actual Brussels now are all in the freezer we had a really really nice crop of Brussels it's a pity you weren't here to see them but never mind so we'll start again next year they were called cascade and 
I will do them again. They are very, very good Brussels. Let's go and show you what we've been doing on the garden. The fruit cage, if you can remember, we put the path in so we've got a good access to it this year. And a gate. And I have mulched it all. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I have mulched it all with compost from the bins. This is a little bit of manure in it, but not a lot. And I've just put it on top and lightly hoed it in for now. And we've got some new strawberry plants there coming along nicely. And everything seems to be doing well. What we will do is, while we're doing the um, fruit trees winter wash, we'll give these fruit bushes a quick going over that are in this fruit cage as well. Okay, let's have a look at the next bit. This is the old plot A, if you can remember. What I've done, I've actually divided it into four and put the pathway in so we've got good access. This plot has been heavily and very deeply manured. So it's been double dug and manured into the bottom and to into the top and this will be for all the heavy feeders, your onions etc. If you can see over there, there's a few overwintered onions that are just beginning to show a bit of life and a bit of growth. Until the soil is ready for planting, what I'll do is, and I've already done it twice, I should just keep hoeing it. Just keep pushing the hoe through it all the time. This actually breaks the soil up a little and stops it from capping as you can see it takes quite a time but it's a, and it dries it out a little bit quicker as well I do this to all the beds if you can remember it was on this plot where the raised beds were all we've got left at the moment because we've moved them down which I'll show you in a moment is to coloured patches where the raised beds used to be. So let's move on. I've done the same with plot B. There's a little bit of celeriac still to lift. That'll be gone in the next few weeks and I should dig that and then that's that one done. This is for the brassicas so what I'll do is when it's finished I should very give it a really good heavy liming. Now plot C I haven't done a lot on because I've still got the spring cabbage coming along nicely. Some nice red cabbage as well. And a little bit of kale at the end. The slugs have had a bit of a go at it but the main heads are alright. A little bit of frost burn. Now this is plot C. It will carry the potatoes this season. I can't really do anything until the cabbages are lifted. I've got the manure ready to dig in but then I'll divide it into four and put the four different varieties of potato in. Now this is where the raised beds have been moved to. I've put two in and I'm going to put another one between the two and hopefully cover that one with plastic or perspex, I'm not sure yet. But the centerpiece will carry the salads and these will carry the root crops. It's all new soil and really piled up. It's up on bricks at the moment because I painted it and I didn't want to, I want to get the air in so they can dry the paint. As you can see plot D is as far as I've got actually up to now. Quite a bit of work still to do on it, the pathways to put in, the digging still to do. On plot D I've actually removed the old pear tree and the plum tree that was here. We haven't removed the Victoria because that, that crop white quite well. But the other two, even though there are other pear trees in other gardens next door, it's never really bore fruit so I've had to take them out and we'll crop something else in there that's more beneficial to us. So plot D is still in construction. Now I'm stood in the construction site at the moment. As you can see, I apologise, a bit of a mess, but we'll get there. Now it's my 
birthday next week. I'm all of uh, young 70 next week, but Diane has kindly bought me a cedarwood lean-to greenhouse. So I'm going to build these walls and put the doors in so I can have a lovely lean-to greenhouse down here. And if you can imagine, it faces due south sun all day and with the back wall it's going to be a lovely greenhouse but it's going to be a week or two being made so if you just bear with me while I get it made and as I say I apologize for the mess but it will look beautiful when it's done I'm sure now that'll be it for this week just a short video to show you that I'm still here and kicking especially after my dreaded bout of man flu which is oh terrible we're beginning the season nicely the soil is still very very cold but we need to get all this preparation work done and I'll take you along with me while I prepare and get the seed ready and hopefully we'll have a good season now thank you for all those people who have been crying after me many many thanks for all those people who subscribe we do appreciate it and look forward to hearing from you okay then so get out there in the garden keep busy keep warm and hopefully we'll see you next week bye now